Hello, um, my name is Robert Acevedo. Thank you for joining us today. I am an enrolled agent here at Freedom Tax, and we are bringing you this uh, information or this video today talking about the topic of FERPTA withholding. Uh, FERPTA is something that we specialize in, FERPTA withholding. We have a lot of foreign clients and we get a lot of calls about it. So we wanted to take the time today and do a bit of a deep dive into FERPTA, uh, what it's all about, how, how can we assist and make sure that you stay with us till the end, because I'm going to go over the four most frequently asked questions or misconceptions, uh, regarding FERPTA. All right. Excellent. Let's begin. So. Uh, FERPTA withholding is, uh, as I said, it, it's a topic that it's very common to us here in the office. We're located here in, in, in being located in Central Florida. It's um, a service that we get to practice a lot, right, uh, for our clients. And so let's go over what uh, the basics of FERPTA are, right? Uh, so what is FERPTA, right? Uh, FERPTA is an acronym for Foreign Investment in Real Property uh, Tax Act. It's a federal law that applies to foreigner, foreign persons, uh, foreign withholding when they sell real estate in the United States, right, specifically. So what I always like to, to mention um, uh, about this, all right, the example that I like to give is uh, as a U.S. person, when they sell uh, U.S. real estate, um, they don't have to worry about any upfront withholding uh, from the point of view of the IRS, right? The U.S. government gives the benefit of the doubt to a U.S. person to when they sell real estate, they don't have to worry about any taxes being taken at the point of sale. This FERPTA applies to foreigners, right? So a foreign person is not giving that same uh, benefit of the doubt. When a foreign person sells U.S. real estate, the IRS said, well, we're going to require a little bit of upfront, uh, some upfront, and, and it's not a little bit. It can be a pretty sizable amount um, right when the when the sale occurs. And we're going to dig, dig, dig into that now. Specifically, what the IRS says is a foreign person is going to have a 15% withholding of the gross sales price, right? Um why does the IRS do this? Because the IRS doesn't want to be put in a position, um, and it makes sense, right? Um, they don't want to be put in a position where a foreigner, let's say that sells, closes on a house, and no taxes are withheld up front. Well, the IR, you know, in in there's a good chance, you know, right, that, that the withholding, if nothing is, is withheld up front, that a foreign person could sell, right? Proceeds from the sale could be taken out of the country and the then the IRS has no recourse no ability to make a foreign person uh, responsible right to pay taxes on any gains that they had so that's why the IRS says well Mr. And Mrs. foreign seller um, we're going to make sure to take some withhold um, an amount up front but it doesn't mean and this is the biggest takeaway you know you are the you know anybody who's watching this video is that just because a foreign person is subject to the withholding doesn't mean that the IRS gets to keep the withholding, right? So this 15% that we see here, the IRS says, take it, it's going to be withheld from the gross sales price, right? And it needs to be submitted to the IRS within 20 days of the closing uh, after it happens, right? From a foreign seller. So that's the general for the rule and the thinking uh, of the IRS behind it, right? But now, as I mentioned, just because um, the IRS does the withholding doesn't mean that they get to keep it. We have to think of this as this upfront withholding as an estimate, right? Um, and although the withholding is um, applied to or paid by the seller, the IRS places the burden or the responsibility upon the buyer. So that's why uh, if anybody, you know, uh, anybody out there who's watching this video, and if you're the buyer, you also have an important role to play and affirm the transaction because although the seller is the one who's subject to the withholding is going to be highly motivated to take the necessary steps to get a refund of these funds, uh, the buyer also wants to make sure that the withholding is done and um, 
properly sent to the IRS within the time frame that the IRS has established, which is the 20 days. All right. Now, as I mentioned, why did the USA have to implement FERPTA? Um, um, I covered this in a second ago, but just to 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 make sure that we understood the point, the U.S. government doesn't want to be put in a position where a, a foreigner uh, doesn't have any withholding, doesn't pay any taxes on capital gains. So that you're going to say we're going to take it up front, but here are here's what you can do to get a refund back of of the funds withheld at closing, right? Now. It's important to know or understand that the FERPTA upfront withholding, the 15% that we talked about, is not the final tax, right? It's an estimated withholding, right? Now, I've had uh, situations where uh, a foreigner sold and had a sizable profit, and it rarely happens, but the 15% could actually be less than the actual tax due based on a seller's capital gain. In most cases, the 15% is more than enough, right? Withholding, and a lot of times a foreign seller, if we follow the proper steps, can get a full refund or a partial refund of that 15%. But the point is, is that the 15% is an estimate, right? Um, and if we, proper, if we follow the proper steps, we are very likely to get a refund back of the full amount or a large portion of it. Okay, now let me cover here the FERPTA exceptions, right? So these are cases, these are ways that we can possibly uh, avoid uh, FERPTA withholding from the point of view of, of the seller, right? No, so in cases, um, and I know that a lot of our friends here could be realtors, you know, who are listening to this information on behalf of their of their um, clients who are sellers. So let's be aware of this. And also for, for foreign sellers themselves. Um, let's say uh, in cases, the IRS has a specific exception to FERPTA that says that in cases where the sales price is under 300,000 and, right, and we put it there, you know, in, in, in bold and red because it's 300,000 and the buyer signs an affidavit at or before the closing indicated that he or she intends to use the property for personal purposes for at least 50% of the time during the first two years after closing. So, right, very, very specific. So, um, layman's terms, right? Uh, when a seller, uh, if the sales price is, we have a foreign seller, right? Sales price is under 300,000 and the buyer intends to use the property for personal use and they sign an affidavit stating that that's the case, and that's a very important and key part, then FERPTA doesn't apply at all, right? So for point of view uh, of a seller, this would be a perfect situation. Now, from the point of view of a buyer, right? If you're a buyer out there considering uh, or looking for information where you are being told that the, the seller is a foreigner and FERPTA applies, do you want to sign an affidavit like this, even if you're going to be you, uh, living in the house, well, you have to be careful, right? From the point of view of the buyer, um, you have to be aware of what is that you're, you're you're signing, the responsibility that you're taking on, because what happens if you were to sell the house before the two years? In theory, the IRS could hold you responsible for that withholding that wasn't done uh, when you bought the house because the affidavit was signed. So from the point of view of the seller, if you find a buyer who is going to live in the house and willing to sign this uh, affidavit, excellent. Base case scenario, you don't have to worry about any upfront FERP the withholding. From the point of view of the buyer, you want to be careful signing such an affidavit. Excellent. All right. So now, um, more on the inception topics. So this is this is not so much an exception, but um, cases where the fifth the standard is fifteen percent withholding of the gross sales price, right? But there are cases where the upfront withholding can be automatically reduced from 15 to 10 percent. So FERPTA still applies, but you know we can uh, reduce reduce it by a large amount. What's what cases are those? Well, um, the FERPTA withholding is, is reduced to 10 percent, right? And number one, um, when um, the sales price is over 300,000, right, up to a million, right? So from 300,000 to a million 
the FERP they're withholding is reduced to 10% as long as the same situation, right? The buyer is, is going to live in the house pretty much and signs an affidavit stating as such. So in situations like that, right, the FERP they're withholding is reduced to automatically to 10%. All right. Excellent. Now, okay, so let's cover FERP cases when FERP does not apply at all. Right, and we're here. We're gonna get into uh, certain topics, or, or, or we're gonna mention different type of companies. So this could generate more questions. But if you know if, if that comes up, please feel free to reach out to us, and, and we can help clarify any additional questions. But cases when FERP does not apply at all. Well, when the property owner is an LLC of two or more members, LLC fills out the partnership return form 1065. Right. So what does that mean? Um, it's very common for uh, a foreign person who comes and invests in the U.S. Uh, to maybe open up and do the investment under a U.S. entity like an LLC. So it's, this can be a good strategy uh, to uh, tax planning, right, to avoid FERP the withholding uh, in the future, you know, when a sale occurs. So if a foreign person uh, opens up an LLC and it's a multi-member LLC and the LLC is the owner of the property being sold, and then even if the, the the members of the LLC are foreigners, FERPTA does not apply at all because a multi-member LLC falls as a partnership. And by rule, FERPTA doesn't apply. So that's number one. Number two, if the property owner, right, uh, the seller is a U.S corporation, a domestic corporation uh, is the owner of the property. FERPTA does not apply because a corporation files form 1120 and FERPTA withholding does not apply to this form, right? So first one was multi-member LLC, owner of the property being sold. Second one is a corporation, domestic corporation selling the property, even if the if, if the shareholders, right, of the corporation are foreigners, FERP that does not apply, all right? And then number three is a combo, an LLC, right? One owner, multi-owner, whatever the case may be, but either a single member or a multi-member LLC that has elected, that has made the election to be treated as a corporation for taxes because it files the same form 1120, uh, FERP that does not apply. So I know we've mentioned several things there that that might not be that you might not be familiar with as far as these forms 1065 form. We can you know give us a call for more information, but these are just general tax strategies where FERPTA does not apply that a foreigner can take advantage of. All right. Oh, one more the cases when FERPTA does not apply. Well, when a foreigner, um, so this speaks to this has this part of it. Number four has nothing to do with. Um, companies right let's say uh let's say the seller or the property being sold is owned by an individual right but that individual is a foreigner right as far as immigration status but living in the u.s which can you know i've seen it happen plenty of times before well um so when the foreign seller meets the requirements to be considered a resident alien for tax purposes remember there's there um there's a difference between what the immigration status of an individual is and what the status as far as the IRS is, right? So for tax purposes, an individual who might not have uh, their green card yet or or um, or uh, uh, their residency is not a citizen, right, can still avoid FERPTA, avoid FERPTA withholding because they can be considered for tax purposes a U.S. person if they either have a green card or they meet the physical presence test that's the point that I'm, I'm trying to get to b right when they when a foreign person has physical presence in the u.s maybe they're they're here on an asylum and waiting to get their residency or their green card or be you know then they can avoid FERPTA or FERPTA does not apply simply because of their physical presence in the U.S., right? Their substantial presence. There's a test, it can be quite, you know, convoluted or complicated, and we can get into that with you. But know that if a you uh, a foreigner has been physically present in the U.S. for the last several years, 
and you meet the substantial presence test, then FERPTA can be completely avoided or does not apply. All right. Excellent. Now, quick, quickly here, let's let's talk about uh, cases when FERPTA does apply. Right. Number one, owners of the property are foreigners as natural person, no LLC, no corp. So this is the classic case. You have a foreign person who is selling U.S. real estate, be it one owner, multiple owners, FERPTA applies on the gross sales price. All right. Number two, I mentioned LLCs before, right? But I mentioned before that either we had multi-member LLCs or we had single members of LLCs who had made election to be treated as a corporation for tax purposes. For that didn't apply. But in number two, we have a single member LLC. The single member is a foreigner. FERPTA applies. Why? You might say, well, it's under an LLC. Well, we have to understand that a single member LLC, the IRS sees it as a, uh, for tax purposes, they call it a disregarded entity. That means that uh, even though for legal purposes it's an LLC, when it's a single member, the IRS says, we're gonna, you're going to file uh, on the taxes as under that single member's requirement. And a foreigner, FERPTA applies. So that's why even if it's under an LLC, single member FERPTA applies. They want to they wanna change it to a multi-member LLC for FERPTA not to apply. And number three is if the seller of the, real, the U.S. real estate is a foreign company, right? Be that a corporation, whatever, whatever type of entity it may be, if it's a foreign company who owns U.S. real estate, FERPTA applies, all right? Excellent. So now, how can we actually, when we know that FERPTA applies, is there any way that we can reduce the withholding? Yes, there is. The IRS uh, allows a foreign seller who knows they're going to be subject to FERPTA to file for what's called a reduced withholding uh, application, a, a reduced withholding certificate, right? Form 8288B, right? This is a specific form that can be filled out um for the closing excuse me <clears throat> for the closing uh, at, at closing no later than the closing date and submit it to the irs right and what the irs will do is that they'll take into account what the purchase price was what the selling price was determine if there's a capital gain right if there's no capital gain the irs will reduce the withholding to zero if there is some capital gain, then the what the IRS will do will they will reduce the withholding to twenty percent, but of the capital gain, right? So instead of fifteen percent of the gross sales price, it'll be twenty percent of the gain, which generally is going to be a much lower number. This is completely a, a, a good way to go, right? It's a good possibility. I have personally prepared a lot of these eighty two eighty eight for foreign clients in the past. So it, it, it's, a, it's an option. Unfortunately, right now, I would say it's not the best option, right? So even, why do I say that? Because of point number two. Um, currently, we've seen that the, the waiting times to hear back from the IRS FERPTA unit on a reduced withholding application, nine to 12 months easily, right? And it just... Uh, doesn't make sense time wise to wait you know to to go into the, to go this route you know right now the better option and you know this is subject to change uh, pretty much uh, um, the covid right the, the pandemic uh, caused great delays within the FERPTA unit um, as far as processing these applications pre pandemic the waiting time for uh, applying for the reduced withholding certificate was usually through 2 to 3 months made a lot more sense it was a completely viable option but from what from what we've seen they are still way behind processing these applications so even though this does exist and we hope to come back to it and use it more as a tool to get that FERPTA withholding reduced right now it doesn't make a lot of sense, but hopefully it will soon. All right. Excellent. And this is just uh, for you to see what this form 88, 8288B that I mentioned, what it looks like, right? This is the application you can see in box one. That's where the seller transfer information goes. 
box two is where the buyer's information go, right? And the rest of it is just, are just details of the property address. Uh, you can see in 6A, it, that's the selling date, 6B, right, the, the, the selling price and so on, right? So this is the actual form that is used to apply for the reduced withholding certificate, which we hope to be able to um, use again soon. Excellent. And um, form 8288A is the form that we use on this previous slide on um, box on number three. Uh, I, I mentioned this is uh, when you apply for form 8288B, the title company holds on to the FERP, the funds in escrow. But when it comes time to actually send the funds to the IRS, form 8288A is what we use to send the funds along with the the 15 percent check that goes to the irs all right now we've come to the frequently asked questions right the questions that we discuss that are the most common and misconceptions there's a lot of FERPTA information out there right that's why we're doing this video to try to help uh, our public and our clients to you know just be clear on how this FERPTA process works how we can help and to answer some of those questions that um, you know the information might not be right out there. So question number one is, if a foreign seller has made a loss on the sale of the property, do you have to pay a FERPTA? A lot of, it's been our experience that a lot of foreign sellers are told either by realtors, by friends, who, who knows, but they are misinformed and told that because they're selling at a loss, that FERPTA does not apply. That is, that is not the case at all. Remember that in the U.S., we're, you know, we're a huge nation. There are, are you know, thousands of real estate transactions, and the IRS cannot be involved in each and every one of them. So that's why the FERP the rule is a general rule that applies to you know, all transactions. The, and, you know, so the IRS says we're going to require the withholding up front regardless if there's a loss. The IRS doesn't know that when a foreigner, when they're selling, if they have a profit or a gain, right? So the IRS says, we're gonna require the withholding, even if, you know, regardless if, if the seller has a, uh, has a loss. In a situation where the seller is selling for a loss, we can um, know that we're gonna get a full refund of the withholding because if there's no capital gain, there's no profit, there's, there's not gonna be any tax to pay. So under FERPTA, there is no automatic exception from FERPTA if a seller is at a loss. If a foreigner feels that he is exempt to FERPTA, he may need to request an IRS withholding certificate. This is which it, what I mentioned earlier, right? Uh, Form 8288B. Uh, so this is a one route to go, and this is definitely going to be the way to go, especially when the waiting times on Form 8288B come down. All right. Question number two: Foreign seller does not have an ITIN. We haven't talked about items and is willing to pay the IRS. Can you send the money to the IRS without an item? Uh, no, you don't want to do that because if the IRS receives uh, FERPTA funds without an item number for the seller, they're, they're not going to know who to apply it to. It could get lost, right? Uh, they're going to have a name. They're going to have a property address, but they're not going to have a tax identification number for the seller. So foreign sellers must have or apply for an item number if they don't already have one as part of this process. And that's a service that we can provide as well. We can help foreign sellers apply for their uh, ITIN number. ITIN stands for Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. And this is the tax ID number that a foreign person uh, needs to apply for whenever they're going to file a tax return. Um, so it, in order to get to that point of filing a return, which is how we get the FERPTA withholding back, we must take advantage of the of the FERPTA process and apply for the item ahead of time. So if you're listening to me out there and you're a foreign seller and you don't have an item, we can help you apply for one. If you have an item and it might be um, expired, we can help you renew it as part of this process. All right. So an item is a very important part. So let's go to number three. Does FERPTA apply when both the seller and the buyer are foreigners? Yes. It doesn't matter what the status of the buyer is. If the seller is a foreigner, the same rule applies even if both 
parties are foreigners are are yeah if the buyer and seller are both foreigners if the seller is a foreigner FERPTA is going to apply and and it would be um a very important for both parties to have an item number so even if the buyer is a foreigner and doesn't have an item we can help that foreign buyer apply for the item as well all right and number four oh the 1031 exchange probably a lot of people have heard this out there does doing a 1031 exchange cancel FERPTA? No, doing a 1031 exchange does not cancel FERPTA withholding for the foreign seller. So uh, what's a 1031 exchange? 1031 exchange is a, is a tool, right? Um, a tax planning tool that uh, an individual uh, who is gonna sell real estate and knows that they're gonna have a sizable uh, capital gain or profit can um, enter in this into a 1031 exchange uh, process in order for uh, delay right uh, the recognition of profit and pay capital gains taxes on the current year right so if i know i'm going to sell a piece of real estate i know i'm going to have a profit i can go in and you know um, follow the 1031 exchange uh, paperwork file it do what i need to do follow all the rules and when I file my taxes, I, uh, I'm going to sell that property. I'm going to exchange it or close on a new one, right? Uh, the funds from the sale of the first one are going to be transferred directly into the purchase of the next one. I do all my due diligence. Everything is squared away. When I file my tax return for that year, I uh, say, hey, IRS, this was a 1031 exchange. So this profit that I had, I'm not going to recognize it for the current year, not paying a capital gains. I'm going to, you know, roll it forward to a future, to the future year. Um, a foreign person can do all of that. Same process can take advantage of the same, uh, of the same uh, 1031 exchange. But the difference is that a foreign person doing a 1031 exchange does not avoid FERP the withholding. So uh, because they are a foreigner. So even, it, you know, the reason that I bring this slide or I include this question is that in talking to uh, foreign clients, foreign sellers and realtors, it's a very common misconception that just because you do a 1031 that it avoids FERPTA and it does not. Super clear on that. All right. So there you go. Uh, here's our contact information. Um, and you, you know, have you listening to this video today and you had any further questions about FERPTA, uh, please give us a call, send us an email. We would be happy to provide you with a consult. We've been doing FERPTA now for over 10 years, clients all over the world, thankfully. Uh, being in Florida, it's, it's you know, uh, there's a lot of foreign investment. Uh, so we get to um, have a lot of practice at it and have a lot of experience. And we've been very successful helping our clients uh, deal with FERPTA, um, you know, comply with the IRS uh, and, you know, get back the, as much of that withholding as possible. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Again, this has been Robert Acevedo with Freedom Tax, uh, and we'll see you next time.